Hi everybody, so we're back with The Skin I'm In. We're about to read chapter five. Just a quick reminder that um, we're now in the rising action and so the purpose is to watch how the conflict is developing for our main character, Malika. Um, and I've asked you specifically to think about how other characters affect your main character. Um, in this case, we were specifically thinking about Miss Saunders, who Malika mentions as a problem for herself. And then um, I also asked you uh, to think about Char, who Malika doesn't necessarily say is a problem, but definitely has a lot of influence over her. Uh, after you read all the way through chapter six, you are going to complete the assignment in Google Classroom. And in that case, I do specifically ask you to describe the relationship between Malika and Char and to do so with text evidence. So um, we're going to read chapter five. And that will give you some ideas. And then after chapter six, you'll go ahead and do that within the Google Classroom. Hope that you guys are well and that you're enjoying our book. All right, here we go. Here we go. Chapter five. When I get home, Mama is waiting at the door to take me downtown to buy new clothes. She says she got a bonus at work, so she has some extra cash to throw around for once. I don't care how she got the money, just as long as I get to spend some of it. So here I am today, looking fine. I got on enough lip gloss to shine a car, and I have a crease in my pants sharp enough to cut somebody. For the first time in, who knows when, I look like somebody. And Charlize Jones ain't had nothing to do with it. At school, everybody's staring at me. Even John John's doing a double take. When I walk into class, all eyes is on me. Char's the only one that's got something negative to say. Hmm, I wonder why. So your mama's finally broke down and bought you some clothes. About time, she says, as soon as we get to Miss Saunders' class. When I walk into Miss Saunders' room, she's already giving out an assignment. We get to work on this assignment with someone else, she says. Char lets Miss Saunders know that me and her are going to be partners. Char's figuring I'll do all the work. But Miss Saunders is hip to that game. She says she's picking our partners. She hooks me up with Desda. Char don't like that one bit. She picks up her stuff and walks out the room. Miss Saunders acts like Char's leaving don't bother her none. Desda is the short, fat girl sitting by the door. Everybody in school knows she can cook up a storm. Turkey, stuffed chicken, gravy, three cheese macaroni pasta salad, fried steak, lasagna. She's won all kinds of cooking awards. She even won $500 from a Pillsbury Bake Off contest. She called her recipe Desda Darling's Delicious Double Dutch Chocolate Chip Cake. She never will spend that $500 prize money, though. It's scholarship money for college, and Desda can't hardly read what the award says, let alone try and get into college. I hear Miss Saunders going to start tutoring Desda. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm thinking Desda's going to read on grade level when pigs fly. Anyhow... Miss Saunders asked the class to pretend we're teenagers living in the 17th century, which if you don't know, it's about the 1600s. It's about the time America was first settled, but before we were even a country settled by the Europeans. We have to write a diary chronicling our experiences. John John raises his hand and asks why we got to do this assignment anyway. Don't make no sense to me, he says, frowning. Miss Saunders looks like she's thinking hard for a good reason herself. Her fingers go up to her lips. Her eyes check out the ceiling. <laughs> like she's going to find the answer up there. I want you to know what it feels like to live in somebody else's skin and see the world through somebody else's eyes, she says. Miss Saunders takes a deep breath, closes her eyes then tells us to do the same. When you were little, you loved to play pretend, to be G.I. Joe or Barbie. This is the same thing. Playing pretend, she says. G.I. Joe's a punk. Don't nobody want to be him? John John yells, cracking up the whole class. You get to be anyone you like, 
Miss Saunders says, walking toward him. She tells us that then this exercise will show her how well we write and use our imaginations. So no more grumbling, she says, get to work now. I look at Desda. She's sitting there showing off her big white teeth and licking her lips like they're candy. At first, I don't say nothing. I roll my pencil around on the desk. I wait for Desda to start things. But nothing happens. Desda doesn't say nothing for 10 whole minutes. Then here comes Miss Saunders like she's big been the clock. I hope you and your partner are using your time wisely. You only have 20 minutes left. I rip out some loose leaf paper and start writing. This here is what we're going to do, I tell Desda. She doesn't say nothing. She's just smiling and picking at some crud caked in her eyes. So I get started without her. At first, I pretend I'm a girl living in a drafty castle that I hate because my parents don't get enough candles to light the place. Then I start thinking, back then, I would have been a slave. Maybe a slave girl in the bottom of a boat, chained to some boy with the prettiest eyes and some girl who keeps stealing my little scraps of food, skinny and stinking and starving and all the time next to a cute boy who I like so much it hurts. I start to write. Dear Diary, I hate fish, but I could eat a whole one right now. I haven't had nothing much to eat in three weeks, or is it five weeks? Watery rice with maggots is all they give us here. Mama used to always say I was the skinny one. She would cry if she saw me now. All ribs and knees, ankles big as yams. Worse than no food and stink everywhere is having Kinjari see me now. Mama would say I am a vain and foolish girl, here dying and wondering what some boy thinks about me. But I can't help it. In my village, Kinjari's family would know my family and maybe arrange for us to be married. Even at my age, 13. But no one would ask to marry me like this, sitting in my own filth. My head shaved clean to keep lice away. Skin dry and ashy like tree bark ate away at my desert by the desert wind. Day in and day out, Kinjari eyes me, staring like he sees the sun rising in my eyes. I want to ask him why he looks at me that way. Am I something so beautiful he can't help but stare? I keep quiet. Beauty is where one finds it, my father used to say. Sometimes when I wake, I am so close to Kinjari I can smell his breath. Like mine, it is awful. But I don't care. It is good knowing he is near. Knowing he was near, I mean... I was sick, bad for a long while. When I woke up, Kinjari was gone, dead. He had the mark, the pox. The girl chained to me said, sucking her front teeth like soup goes. The slavers tossed him over the side, she said. But this one, she steals my food. Can I trust her with the truth? I don't know. Akilma. Hmm, interesting letter from her. Um, I'm going to pause for a second. I just want you to think about what she wrote and what it tells us about what she believes and who she wants to be. And maybe even think about who the characters in her fictional story might represent in her real life. Okay, so back to the reading. Um, I am right after the letter. I read the diary letter to Desta. She asks how I came up with the girl's name, Akilma. It's close to my name, spelled backward, I tell her. That tells me she's taking personal inspiration into this letter. How come you don't talk proper like Akilma talks in the diary, she asks. Don't nobody talk like that for real? Only people in old movies and books. 
Then I tell her how, before he died, my father read me books where people spoke like that. Some of it stuck, I guess. Miss Saunders picks up the papers and starts reading out loud. Don't read mine, I think, turning my head to the wall. Desda raises her hand and asks Miss Saunders to read ours. Miss Saunders says it's the best, most thoughtful piece she's heard so far. Desda, Malika, good job, she says. Desda smiles, sits up straight and tall, and shows off those giant teeth of hers. I should be pissed off at her since she didn't do a dang thing to help me write my essay. But today I've got on my new clothes and I'm feeling mighty fine. I don't crack on Desda or nothing. I just get myself out of there. I don't even answer Char when she calls for me to come her way. This is my day and I'm not letting nobody spoil it. Nobody. Miss Saunders has got other ideas though. She pulls me and Desda aside and says she wants us to keep doing the assignment. No one else, just us. Hmm. Desda asks what we're going to get out of it. Extra credit is all. Desda pulls out right then. Admits she didn't have nothing much to do with writing that assignment. That I did all the work. Miss Saunders turns around to me. Desda walks off. I don't know. Maybe it's these new clothes and all, but I say okay. I don't want to spoil my good mood by telling a teacher where to get off today. Besides, I liked writing that stuff. I didn't tell that to Miss Saunders, though. She could use it against me somehow. All right, so that was chapter six. As I said before, we are in the rising action. I apologize, that was chapter five. Um, in the exposition, we learned that Malika is teased, and now we're tracking how that is moving on. Um, in Chapter 4, she feels really embarrassed by Miss Saunders calling her out about describing her face. And now in Chapter 5, one significant event is that Miss Saunders reads her work out loud in class. Um, she doesn't seem to care too much because she has these new clothes on, but she really did not want the attention Miss Saunders had given to her. However, um, she seems to so far be okay with it, like she's going to continue to do this assignment and maybe even enjoyed the outlet of writing this journal from a fictional point of view as a way of expressing herself. So we're going to continue to monitor that as we go into chapter six and how her relationship with Miss Saunders is doing, as well as her relationship again with Char, who's pretty upset that she couldn't be partners with her. One more note before I let you go. Um, the second part of your assignment for chapters four through six is to do one of the two assignments that Miss Saunders has given her class. So the first choice came out of chapter four, which was tell us what your face says to the world in a minimum of five sentences. And the second option was do the um, diary entry from chapter five. You're pretending that you are someone in the 17th century, so you can just be a new settler to America, or you can be somewhere else in the world, but reimagining your life without all these modern conveniences um, and describing what your life might have been like in that time period. Uh, I didn't, I don't think I put a minimum amount there. I th maybe 10 sentences. Um, if you mention that you watched this YouTube video in your first sentence, so you can just say, I watched the YouTube video, you can cut off one sentence from that requirement and still get full credit. So bonus for watching all the way to the end. That's all for now. If you need anything else, be sure to hit me up on Google Classroom, um, either in tutoring or ELA, or drop me an email. Bye guys.